Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I hope you all are doing absolutely well. Guys, in this video, we are going to prepare for Gen C interview. Okay. So if you are also going to appear for your Gen C interview, we, you know that there are three roles basically uh, based on your performance. Okay. So th in this video, we will be covering technical interview questions, which are very important when it comes to Gen C interview, the types of questions that you will get. Uh, and how you have to answer that. So basically in this video, I have taken questions as well as answers. Okay. I have not taken very in detailed answer, but I have guided you at what point you need to answer in which way and wherever needed. I have also suggested you that you have to search for that question over the internet and prepare for that in detail. Okay. So once you will watch the video, you will understand everything. Make sure to watch the video till complete and otherwise you might miss on some important interview questions that can arise in your Gen C interview. Okay. Before we start the video, if you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done yet as I regularly upload these kinds of helpful videos on my channel related to off-campus drives, placement preparation material. There is a complete playlist that I have created for Cognizant Gen C preparation. Already a lot of uh, interview experience and preparation material I have posted in this playlist. Make sure to check that too. Let's start with today's interview questions. Let's look at this question that we have. What are different types of storage specifiers in C? So let's see what is the answer for this question. So there are basically four types of storage specifiers. First one is your auto storage class specifier. The default storage class for local variables, meaning the variable is created when the block is entered and destroyed when the block is executed. Okay. Next is your static storage specif class specifier. The variable retains its values between function calls and is initialized only once. Next is your external storage class specifier. It refers to a variable or function defined in another file or function. Next is your register storage class specifier. It suggests to the compiler that the variable should be stored in CPU register for faster access. Let's move on to the next question. What do you mean by process and thread? Okay, this is a question from operating systems. Let's see. Process is an active instance of a program that resides in memory while it is executing. It is independent and has its own memory space, whereas thread, thread is the smallest unit of execution within a process. Multiple threads can exist within a process sharing the same memory and share resources but performing different tasks okay so guys these types of questions from different subjects you can expect okay so guys before we move on to the next question if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet make sure to do so so that you don't miss any important updates going forward let's see the next question that we have what is a class okay so again uh, class is a blueprint or template that defines the properties and behaviors Behaviors are what methods of objects. It encapsulates data and functions that work on data. Access modifiers that we have are public, private and protected. So public means what? Members can be accessed from outside the class. Private means what? Members cannot be accessed directly from outside the class and protected means what? Members can be accessed within the class and derived objects. Okay. Now guys, I just want to tell you that these are not the only possible answers for these questions. You can answer it according to you also. So see, class is one of the concepts from OOPS, right? So you can answer it in your own language also. Okay. The main aim of providing this answers is so that you get some material to speak about. Okay. And you will not be having like, you know, short of content. So when you will be sitting in an interview and if you get the same question, then at least if you don't have any words, so you will remember at least what you have, uh, what you are reading now or what you are studying now. Right. So let's now move on to the next question. What is a static and dynamic building? Okay, so we have two types of binding basically. So static binding and dynamic binding. So static binding is also called as early binding. The method of function call is resolved at compile time. This is it is a process of binding a function call to the function definition during compilation. Dynamic binding is also called as late binding. The method of function call is resolved at runtime. This is often used with polymorphism where the method being called is determined at the execution time. Okay, so this is mainly what is a static binding and dynamic binding. Moving on. What are the types of inheritance? So we have a concept of inheritance in OOPS, right? So there are different types of inheritance. Let's see one by one. First one is your single inheritance, multi-level inheritance, multiple inheritance, multi-path inheritance, hierarchical inheritance and hybrid inheritance. Now guys, you are expected that you should know a basic like one paragraph or two sentence answer of these uh, all types of inheritance. You should basically know what every inheritance is and what happens in that. So, but I have not included all of that detail here. I have just included the types of inheritance. Okay. Let's move on to the next question. Now, what do you mean by polymorphism? Okay. So again, our OOPS based concept. So you can see OOPS is heavily asked. Okay. So polymorphism is the ability of an object to take many forms. It allows a function or operator to behave differently based on context. Okay. Now you can also explain polymorphism in this way. Okay. So the word polymorphism itself is created from two words. That is poly 
plus morphism okay plus morphism now poly means what many and morphism means what forms okay so uh, polymorphism is what polymorphism is the ability of an object to take many forms okay so let's see uh, com compile time polymorphism achieved using method overloading or operator overloading resolved at compile time next is your runtime polymorphism it is achieved through method overriding resolved at runtime okay let's now move on to the next one what is the difference between object oriented programming and object based programming okay so see these are two different words so sometimes these kinds of tricky questions can also be asked so you should be aware about it let's see the differences so first of all we'll see what is object oriented programming so object oriented programming does not have built in objects okay whereas object based programming has built in objects next is your uh, object oriented programming follows all loop concepts like polymorphism encapsulation inheritance and abstraction whereas object based programming does not support all loops concept is supposed only objects and encapsulation example of object oriented programming is java c whereas object based programming is javascript visual basic so basically what we usually talk about is object oriented programming only right so object based programming is something we should you, which you should know but it is very rarely asked but this kinds of comparison based questions can arise okay let's now move on to the next question what is a constructor again a question from oops so a constructor is a special method that is automatically invoked when an object of a class is created it is used to initialize the state of an object so constructor as we all know it is automatically invoked when the object of the class is created and it has the same name right let's now move on to the next question what is try and catch block so basically try and catch block it try blocks contains the code that might throw an exception and catch blocks handles the exception if it occurs they are used as exception handling to catch errors and provide solution so basically as soon as you heard uh, the word try and catch uh, try and catch block you should be saying this word that is exception handling okay they are used majorly for exception handling and guys for these kinds of you know questions you do not have to say a very long long answers this much small answer is fine okay and if the interviewer wants you to speak more then you can say okay but too much of long answer is also not necessary so let's move on to the next question now what is macro faster than function why is macro faster than function okay so see we have macros and we have functions so why macro is faster than function basically let's see the answer macro is faster than function macros are faster than functions because they perform text substitution directly at the source code level avoiding the overhead of function calls and stack management that happens within the function basically what uh, macros does is they perform text substitution directly at the source code level because of this main thing it is faster than functions okay let's see the next question that we have what is the difference between ddl and dml commands in dbms okay so ddl stands for what data definition okay this is data definition and dml is what data manipulation okay so manipulation basically dnl are same data and uh, language but the d in here difference for definition and m stands for manipulation let's see data definition language is used to define or modify database structure where is data uh, manipulation language it is used to manipulate data within the database okay see it is modifying the structure understand this thing very important okay this is very important it ddl is, is like mainly responsible for uh, modifying the database structure whereas dml which is manipulation manipulation is happening on data level okay which is manipulating the data okay so that is why i'm writing data level and not on the structure level next is your affects the entire table it affects one or more rows because it is working on the data right commands that we have in ddl are create alter drop and truncate whereas the commands that we have in dml are insert update delete and select okay let's now move on to the next one what is sdlc okay so sdlc so first of all you should know about sdlc sdlc is a very common uh, interview question okay so i would highly suggest that you spend some time on it okay so if you feel that this content is less you should like search it over the internet okay uh, you should at least give a read about it okay software development life cycle okay so let's see what is sdlc sdlc is a structured approach to software development and it includes several phases such as requirement analysis design implementation testing deployment and maintenance see no one is going to ask you in detail but you should also be aware about every phase also okay what is requirement analysis phase what happens in that what happens in designing phase what happens in implementation phase basically it is very easy okay you just have to read it once and you will remember it easily now in sdlc we have different models okay uh, most popular ones are agile model okay 
so you might get a question on agile model in detail they can ask you but the rest uh, they won't ask in much detail but it's still you should know okay so the different models that we have are waterfall model agile model spiral model v model and iterative model one of the most popular and the most commonly used is agile model so this is important so you should uh, like study this one a bit uh, like in detail other than the rest ones okay let's move on to the next one what is purpose of multi threading okay again a concept from oops multi threading enables the execution of multiple threads simultaneously which helps in maximizing cpu utilization and perform multiple tasks concurrently improving the overall system performance so multi threading is a very important and a very beneficial concept basically that we have where what happens multiple threads are executed simultaneously okay which means uh, if a task is executing so uh, one th uh, thread of a task is executing so uh, when it is on hold then other task will implement so this way uh, multiple tasks can perform concurrently this improves the overall system performance a lot okay otherwise uh, without multi threading what will happen uh, one task will complete and then the second one will start and then the next one will start so this one uh, this process was very time consuming and it takes a lot of time but multi threading uh, get rid of this problem okay let's see the next one what is indexing okay very basic question but you should know it indexing in database is a technique to optimize the retrieval of rows from a table based on search conditions now there are different types of indexing that we have primary indexing secondary indexing cluster indexing and, and multi level indexing again you should know every indexing in detail okay so please give it a read if you don't know go to the internet search for it and then give it a read okay it is important let's see the next one what are types of joins okay there are different types of joins that we have in sql inner join left join right join and full join now left join is also called as outer join okay these are outer join now these joins also you should know in detail you should also know one example query based on these joins okay these are that important let's see the next one that we have what is memory management so memory management refers to the process of efficiently handling computer memory resources including allocation tracking and deallocation it ensures that the memory is utilized effectively and the system doesn't run out of memory okay let's now move on to the next one next one is a coding based question okay let's see that uh, so we have to write a program for bubble sort okay so bubble sort is a sorting algorithm just in case if you are not aware what it does is we are given a sort uh, like array which is not sorted for example we have five uh, then two four then one three something like this now after sorting the array should be something like one two three four and five now uh, we have to write the implementation code for bubble sort let me tell you a very high level approach of bubble sort how does it does the sorting it compares the two like at a at the moment it compares two like uh, array elements okay like five and two will be compared and it will see five is greater uh, less than two no so then it will swap it okay so it will do this thing so this much it will swap swap and then it will move forward so next one will be what five and four it will again compare these two and again it will swap them so in this way it will based on swapping okay it it works on the concept of swapping okay let's see the code for it here we have an array uh, and the size of the array okay basically so what we are doing uh, this is basically for uh, print, we are printing the array that we have okay displaying the array basically and then we have this main function we are given this array with multiple elements in it we are calculating the size of array by this thing size of array and size of array of one element now printing before bubble sort so initially uh, whatever our array is we are printing that and then we are writing our logic for uh, bubble sort this is the main logic of bubble sort rest everything is fine this is the main logic let's see see we have variables i j and temporary basically what i told you right we need to perform swapping and how do we usually perform swapping we need two variables and one more a temporary variable which will store the values right so see we are running two loops okay from 0 to i is less than size minus 1 and i plus plus and then j is equals to 0 j is less than size minus i minus 1 j plus plus if our array of j is greater than array of j plus 1 then i told you we need to perform swapping swapping is nothing but uh, first of all we will store our element value like 5 is there so 5 will get stored in temp variable okay and then uh, in this array of 0 we will have our next value which is array of 1 which is 2 right and then array of 1 will have our next value which is temp which is 5 so in this way swapping will happen okay so finally this both loops will run and the entire array will be sorted and finally we will just print out our sorted array after bubble sort and they will display our array okay hope you have understood it if you have any doubts you can ask me in the comment section
So guys, that's all for today's videos. Hope you found it helpful. If you have any doubts, please let me know in the comment section. Make sure to join me on Telegram and you can even follow me on Instagram and ask your queries in the Instagram DM as well. And guys, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, make sure to do so so that you don't miss any important updates from the channel. So that's all for today's video. Thanks for watching the video.